centuries of catastrophe had reshaped humanity. Earth was no longer the cradle of life, it had become a battlefield of survival. The skies were choked with ash, the oceans had turned acidic, and the land was scorched. Famine, wars, and environmental collapse had ravaged civilization, pushing humanity to the brink. Society fractured, governments collapsed, and order gave way to chaos. In this crucible, a new humanity emerged, one forged by hardship and unyielding resolve. Survival was the only rule now, and warfare became second nature. Gone were the days of peace and diplomacy. Humanity had no room for weakness or mercy. Every man, woman, and child learned the art of war. Schools turned into training grounds, factories churned out weapons instead of goods, and resources were funneled into a relentless war machine. Earth became a fortress, its people hardened by the relentless struggle for survival. Unity was found not in ideals but in a singular purpose, to ensure their continued existence, no matter the cost. It was in this state that humanity first encountered the Galactic Council. The Council was a governing body of interstellar species, highly advanced, prosperous, and orderly. They had spread their influence across the galaxy, imposing peace and stability through their superior technology. To them, humanity was an anomaly, a remnant of a primitive race that had somehow survived the odds. The Council regarded Earth with a mixture of curiosity and disdain. First contact was not a meeting of equals. The Council extended what they believed to be a magnanimous offer, joined their coalition, adopt their laws, and benefit from their technological advances. But those laws demanded submission, the curbing of humanity's warlike nature, and a drastic reduction in Earth's military. The Council saw these terms as a way to integrate humanity into a civilized galaxy, to elevate them from their barbaric ways. Humanity saw it differently. The terms were nothing less than a death sentence. Disarmament would mean vulnerability. Submission would mean extinction. The scars of Earth's history were too deep, the memory of nearly being wiped out too fresh. Humanity had evolved not to coexist peacefully, but to fight for survival, tooth and claw, against any threat. The diplomatic talks broke down swiftly. Humanity's leaders refused the Council's terms outright. The Council was unaccustomed to such defiance. They viewed humanity's rejection as reckless arrogance, a challenge to the order they had spent millennia maintaining. To them, humanity was a threat, a dangerous, unpredictable species that needed to be brought to heel. And so, the Council declared war. They believed the conflict would be swift. Their fleets were unmatched, their technology light years ahead of Earth's. It would take little more than a display of force to bring humanity to its knees, to remind this upstart species of its place in the galactic order. The Council's goal was not to destroy humanity but to subdue them, to force them into submission and reshape them into something more manageable, more docile. But they had miscalculated. Humanity's leaders, forged in the fires of endless war, had prepared for this moment. They knew peace with the Council was impossible, and submission was a fate worse than death. In the face of this threat, Humanity did what it had always done, they fought back. But this time, they would not just defend themselves. They would obliterate any enemy that dared challenge their survival. The declaration was clear and brutal. You want war? Then war is what you'll get. But know this, we will not stop until we have wiped you from existence. The galaxy will remember our name, and it will tremble. The Council, confident in their superiority, did not grasp the gravity of those words. They had faced rebellious species before, pacified them with relative ease. Humanity, they believed, would be no different. But humanity was unlike anything the galaxy had ever seen. They had evolved into something terrifying, a species whose only code was survival, whose only measure of victory was total annihilation of their enemies. And in this war, they would not settle for anything less there would be no turning back. The Galactic Council had declared war. Humanity had answered. And the galaxy would never be the same again. The Galactic Council had prepared for a war of discipline and precision, relying on their technological superiority to subdue humanity quickly. But when the first human strike came, it was nothing like they had anticipated. 
humanity had not spent centuries fighting wars for survival only to rely on conventional tactics. In the shadows of Earth's ravaged surface, they had built a war machine unlike anything the Council could have imagined. This was not the humanity of first contact. This was a species armed to the teeth with devastating weapons designed for one purpose, obliteration. Humanity's military was brutal and efficient. They had missile systems capable of vaporizing entire cities in an instant. These were not the delicate energy weapons the Council employed, designed to incapacitate or neutralize threats with minimal collateral damage. No, human weaponry was raw destruction. Entire fleets of ships powered by salvaged alien technology surged forward, their weaponry far more advanced than the Council had expected. Earth had been watching, learning, adapting. The Council's first real taste of this came when humanity launched a strike on one of their outer colonies, a flourishing world, untouched by war for centuries. The attack was swift, violent, and absolute. In a matter of hours, the colony was reduced to rubble. The humans did not discriminate between military targets and civilian infrastructure. Everything was wiped out with a precision that was terrifying in its efficiency. For the Council, this was a war crime, an act of barbarism beyond their comprehension. But for humanity, it was simply war. They had not evolved to fight with restraint. They had no interest in negotiation or prolonged conflict. Their intent was clear to erase any trace of the Council's influence from the galaxy, to ensure that no threat remained to endanger their species. One of the Council officers, stationed on a nearby ship, witnessed the carnage unfold in real time. What had once been a pristine, thriving world was reduced to an ashen wasteland. The officer watched as human ships methodically targeted each remaining structure, leaving nothing behind. It wasn't just the destruction that horrified him, it was the cold efficiency. There was no hesitation, no mercy. They hadn't come to conquer or negotiate. They had come to annihilate. From his vantage point, he saw their cybernetic soldiers deployed to the planet's surface. These were not the soft-skinned creatures the Council had imagined when they first made contact. These were enhanced warriors, with limbs made of steel, neural implants, and weapons integrated into their very bodies. Each movement was calculated, each strike deadly. These were soldiers bred for one thing, war. The officer could barely process the scale of what he was seeing. This wasn't just a battle, this was total devastation. Every assumption the Council had made about humanity's capabilities was shattered in that moment. They had believed this war would be one of control, of forcing humanity to submit. Now, it was clear that humanity would never bow. In the Council's high command, panic began to spread. Word of the destruction reached them quickly. They convened in an emergency meeting, their leaders visibly shaken. This was not the war they had prepared for. They had underestimated the human capacity for destruction, and now they were paying the price. The Council's first instinct was disbelief. How had humanity advanced so quickly? How had they hidden such devastating weaponry? There were no answers. They had grown complacent, assuming their dominance was unchallenged, that no species, especially not one as primitive as humanity, could ever threaten their reign. They were wrong. Mobilization began immediately. More ships, more troops, more resources were thrown into the war effort. But the damage had been done. The Council's forces had been caught unprepared, and the losses were mounting. Every strike humanity launched was precise, overwhelming and brutal. They weren't fighting for territory or power, they were fighting to eliminate any threat to their existence. The Council realized too late that they were dealing with a species that had honed itself in the fires of constant conflict. For humanity, war wasn't a temporary state of affairs. It was their way of life. Their tactics weren't just about defeating an enemy, they were about ensuring that enemy could never rise again. Every victory they claimed was followed by scorched earth, leaving nothing behind but ruins and silence. What the Council failed to understand was that humanity had never known peace. From the moment their planet had begun to die, they had been fighting, against nature, against each other, against extinction. That fight had hardened them, turned them into something the galaxy had never seen before. The Council believed in negotiation, diplomacy, and balance. 
Humanity believed in survival, and in this war, survival meant total annihilation of their foes. As the council scrambled to recover from the devastating first strike, they were forced to confront the harsh reality. This was a war they might not win. The arrogance and complacency that had governed their initial response to humanity were gone, replaced by the cold fear of a power they had never truly understood. The galaxy was vast, and the council's reach extended far, but humanity had something the other species did not, an unyielding drive to ensure their survival, no matter the cost. They didn't need to conquer. They didn't need to rule. They only needed to make sure their enemies could never threaten them again. And with every strike, every planet that fell to the human war machine, it became clear to the council. They had pushed a species too far, and now they were paying the ultimate price. The early 22nd century marked the darkest chapter in human history. The world had been driven to the edge of collapse by a series of cataclysms that no one had foreseen in their full, devastating impact. The rising temperatures from unchecked global warming had triggered mass floods, desertification, and deadly storms. Coastal cities were swallowed by rising seas, and once fertile lands became barren wastelands. As the earth struggled to sustain its population, the most critical resource, food, became scarce. The famines that followed were merciless. Starvation swept across continents, sparing no nation, no people. Governments that had once stood as bastions of stability and order crumbled under the weight of these crises. The infrastructure of global civilization buckled, leaving chaos in its wake. Riots became revolutions. Borders collapsed. Law and order became hollow concepts as desperation turned to violence. In the midst of this chaos, humanity found itself at a crossroads, adapt or perish. And in that moment, adaptation took the form of war. Militaristic factions arose from the ashes of once great nations. These groups, initially seen as the last defense against total anarchy, soon became the rulers of what was left of human civilization. Power was seized not by negotiation or election, but by force. Those who could command armies, control resources, and protect their followers grew in strength, while the weak and unorganized were left to die. A new culture took hold, one that was built around survival, power, and warfare. People were no longer citizens of nations. They were soldiers in the war for existence. Entire generations grew up knowing nothing but conflict. From birth, they were trained to fight, to kill, to survive. It was a world where compassion had no place, where the weak were weeded out, and only the strongest thrived. War was no longer a means to an end, it was the way of life. This survivalist mindset was ingrained into every facet of human society. Schools became military academies. Factories became war machines. Society was reorganized into a rigid hierarchy where strength was the only currency that mattered. Those who were too weak to fight or too compassionate to make hard decisions were cast aside. There was no room for weakness in this new world. As time passed, humanity's focus on survival and warfare drove incredible technological advancements. Desperation had a way of fueling innovation, and with the old world's structures and ruins, there were no longer any ethical boundaries to restrict scientific progress. The line between human and machine blurred as cybernetic enhancements became common. Limbs were replaced with metal, minds were augmented with AI, and entire battalions of soldiers became more machine than man. Genetic engineering, once a controversial field, became the norm. Soldiers were bred to be faster, stronger, more resilient. Every technological breakthrough was aimed at one goal, survival. Warfare was humanity's greatest tool in ensuring that survival. AI-driven weapon systems, orbital cannons, self-replicating drones, and cybernetic warriors became the foundation of the new world order. No one cared for the morality of these creations. In this unforgiving landscape, the ends always justified the means. Yet even as humanity transformed itself into a warlike species, there were those who questioned the path they had taken. Some of the remaining leaders argued that survival shouldn't come at the cost of their humanity. They feared that in their quest to survive, they had lost what made them human in the first place. Their compassion, their ability to coexist, their sense of morality. 
but these voices were drowned out by the harsh realities of the world they lived in. There was no room for ethical debates when extinction was the alternative. The leaders who held power knew that peace, diplomacy, and compassion were luxuries they could no longer afford. The memory of Earth's near destruction was seared into their minds, and they vowed never to let humanity stand vulnerable again. As humanity rebuilt itself, their evolution into a militaristic, war-driven species was complete. They had become something new, something terrifying. Their capacity for destruction had grown beyond anything the old world could have imagined. They were no longer just humans. They were warriors, forged by the fires of extinction, driven by the singular need to survive at any cost. When the Galactic Council first appeared, humanity was presented with a choice, diplomacy or war. The Council came offering peace, order, and integration into a greater galactic society, but their terms required humanity to give up what they had become. They wanted humanity to disarm, to submit to their laws, to let go of the war machine that had sustained them for so long. In the end, the choice was clear. The leaders of Earth knew they couldn't afford to rely on anyone else for their survival. They couldn't risk submission, and they couldn't allow the threat of alien interference to jeopardize everything they had fought for. They had seen what happened to civilizations that trusted in peace. They fell. For humanity, survival wasn't just about living. It was about ensuring that no threat, no matter how distant or powerful, could ever endanger them again. The decision was made. Annihilation was the only guarantee of safety. The Galactic Council, with all its advanced technology and noble ideals, was nothing more than another potential threat. And humanity would not allow any threat to stand. The ethical dilemmas that had once been debated were no longer relevant. Survival outweighed morality. If wiping out entire species was the only way to ensure humanity's future, then so be it. They had evolved beyond the need for compassion or compromise. This was survival at any cost. And with that decision, humanity set its course toward the total annihilation of anything that stood in their way. The Galactic Council was just the first to learn the lesson. The Galactic Council, once the proud and mighty overseer of interstellar peace, now found itself reeling in the face of humanity's relentless onslaught. In a desperate bid to turn the tide, they launched a massive counteroffensive, sending wave after wave of ships and troops against humanity's forces. But every strategy they employed was based on outdated assumptions, clinging to the belief that their technological superiority and sheer numbers would overwhelm this upstart species. It was a grave miscalculation. Each battle ended in disastrous losses. Council fleets were decimated, outmaneuvered, and outgunned by humanity's brutal and efficient war machine. Human ships moved with deadly precision, exploiting every weakness in the Council's defenses. Their cybernetic soldiers ripped through alien ranks with terrifying ease, and their weapons systems obliterated entire squadrons before the Council forces even had time to react. The Council commanders, steeped in centuries of tradition and protocol, had no idea how to counter humanity's unorthodox tactics. They were accustomed to wars of restraint, of calculated engagements designed to minimize collateral damage. But humanity cared nothing for such niceties. They fought to destroy, not to win. Every battle was a scorched earth campaign, leaving nothing but ruins in their wake. As the council's losses mounted, cracks began to form within their ranks. Tensions rose in the high command, where once united species now found themselves at odds. Some argued that peace was the only option, that humanity might be willing to negotiate if they were offered favorable terms. Others, hardened by fear and desperation, believed that humanity could not be reasoned with, that they were a cancer, a plague that must be eradicated before they spread further through the galaxy. The debates grew heated. Council members who had once viewed their position as invincible were now gripped by fear. They had never faced an enemy like humanity before an enemy that did not seek conquest or power but total annihilation. The very nature of the war had shifted, and it terrified them. While the Council's high command squabbled over how to proceed, humanity launched a new form of warfare, one designed to break not just the Council's military might, but their very spirit. Broadcasts from humanity's warships began flooding Council communication networks, 
showing vivid footage of the destruction they had wrought. Alien cities, once vibrant and full of life, were now nothing more than craters of ash. The broadcasts showed shattered colonies, decimated fleets, and the faces of alien civilians as their worlds crumbled around them. The message was clear. Humanity would not stop until every member of the Council was erased from existence. The psychological impact of these broadcasts was devastating. Panic spread like wildfire across Council worlds as citizens, once secure in their government's protection, realized that they were next. They saw the fate of other worlds, entire species obliterated in a matter of days, and knew that their own destruction was inevitable. On the Council's core planets, riots broke out as the public lost faith in their leaders. Civilians flooded the streets, demanding answers, demanding protection, demands that the Council could not meet. Their forces were stretched thin, desperately trying to hold the line against humanity's relentless advance, and there were no resources left to maintain order at home. Governments faltered, cities burned, and once prosperous societies crumbled under the weight of their own fear. In hushed voices, civilians spoke of the broadcasts, of the human warships approaching ever closer to their planets. There was no escape. There was no hope. They had trusted the Council to protect them, but now, in their darkest hour, that trust was shattered. As panic gripped the civilian population, the Council's high command scrambled to prepare for a final defense. They threw every last resource into a desperate effort to slow humanity's advance but it was clear to everyone involved that it was only a matter of time before the end came. Even as they mobilized more ships, more soldiers, and more weapons, the inevitable loomed over them like a shadow. Meanwhile, humanity was already preparing for their final, decisive blow. This wasn't just about ending the war. It was about ensuring that no threat to their survival would ever rise again. Their war machine, now fully engaged, was ready to deliver the death knell to the Galactic Council. Every move they made was calculated to cripple the Council's remaining defenses, to bring their enemies to their knees once and for all. Across human-controlled space, preparations were underway. Fleets were refueled, soldiers were armed, and weapons of unimaginable destruction were readied. This would not be a battle of attrition or a series of small skirmishes. This was the end game. The humans knew that a single, overwhelming strike would break the Council once and for all. The Council's leaders, once confident in their ability to negotiate peace or force humanity into submission, now found themselves staring down the barrel of extinction. They had pushed a species too far, and now they were paying the price. In the final days before humanity's ultimate strike, a sense of dread hung over the Council's remaining strongholds. They could feel the noose tightening around them. There were no more strategies to employ, no more reinforcements to call upon. All that was left was to wait for the inevitable. And as humanity's forces gathered for the final assault, the last remnants of the Council's hope began to fade. They had believed themselves to be the guardians of peace, the rulers of the galaxy. But now, they were the hunted, and humanity had proven itself to be the most dangerous predator of them all. The galaxy was about to witness the fall of an empire and humanity's final, devastating blow was on the horizon. The final attack came with swift, unrelenting precision. Humanity's fleets, now the most fearsome force in the galaxy, gathered in the heart of the Galactic Council's territory. They had made their preparations, honed their technology, and now they were ready to deliver the final blow. No one on the Council's remaining worlds truly believed they could be saved. Even the most hardened defenders knew this was no mere battle for dominance. This was the end. When humanity struck, it was not just an assault. It was a calculated extermination. Planet after planet was vaporized in a matter of minutes. Entire species, some of which had existed for millennia, were wiped out in the blink of an eye. The fleets moved with terrifying efficiency, obliterating defenses and leaving no survivors. Humanity's goal was clear. There could be no remnant of the Council left, no chance of retaliation, no future threat. At the Council's central command, panic had already set in. Leaders, once so confident in their power and influence, were now mere spectators to their own destruction. As the final wave of human warships approached, a high-ranking Council member, 
a figure once revered as a diplomat and a protector of peace, stood in stunned silence. They watched through trembling eyes as their civilization was torn apart. The skies above their homeworld darkened with the shadows of humanity's ships, and the realization hit like a hammer. Humanity did not seek negotiation, compromise, or peace. They sought absolute security, and the only way to achieve that was through total annihilation. The council member, in their final moments, understood the cruel logic driving humanity's actions. They had underestimated humans, seen them as a lesser species. But humanity's suffering had transformed them into something else, something relentless, unyielding. The council had hoped to bring them into line, to make them part of their peaceful order. Instead, they had created the galaxy's most dangerous force. The council's central command, a symbol of galactic unity for centuries, fell in a matter of hours. Its fleets burned in the atmosphere as humanity's orbital bombardment reduced the planet's cities to rubble. Billions of lives were erased, entire cultures snuffed out without mercy. The Council's long-standing reign over the galaxy was over, replaced by the cold, calculated efficiency of humanity's war machine. When the dust settled, and the last of the Council's worlds lay in ruins, humanity stood victorious. They had done it, secured their survival. But the cost was unimaginable. Countless species were gone, entire planets devoid of life, cultures and histories that had spanned thousands of years, reduced to nothing but memory. Humanity, now the undisputed ruler of the galaxy, stood at the apex of power. But as the celebrations died down, and the reality of their victory began to sink in, there was a creeping sense of emptiness. They had won, yes. They had ensured that no one would ever threaten them again. But they had also become something else entirely, something darker. In their quest for survival, humanity had sacrificed everything that once defined them. Compassion, morality, and even the hope for peaceful coexistence had been stripped away, replaced by a singular drive to endure at any cost. They were no longer a people struggling for survival. They were conquerors, executioners, and the architects of galactic extinction. The galaxy once teeming with life and diversity, was now a graveyard. And as humanity stood on the ashes of what they had destroyed, questions began to emerge. What would they become next? With no enemies left to fight, with no threats to their survival, what was their future? Victory had come at the highest price, and though they had survived, something vital had been lost. The story ends not with the cheers of triumph, but with a lingering sense of unease. Humanity had become the dominant force in the galaxy, but in doing so, they had erased countless others. The galaxy would remember them not as survivors, but as the species that chose annihilation over peace. And while they had won the war, the true question remained, was survival worth the price they had paid? The cold silence of the galaxy, now empty of its many voices, was the only answer.